Welcome back. In the last video, we talked a little bit about the relationships um, between pressure and volume in volume control ventilation. We talked about how pressure varies as the properties of the lung change and how with the lungs become more rigid, the pressure generated by delivering a set tidal volume increases. Whereas if the lungs become more floppy, then the, the, the pressure generated is lower for the same amount of volume. And then we, I told you that I would do a video on uh, a term I um, introduced called compliance. So we're going to write this out here, compliance. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about in this video. And we're going to discuss a couple of other concepts as well and, and look at this, um, this pressure volume um, uh, graph over here and give us an idea of how things work. So what compliance is, is compliance is how distensible the lung is. That's the kind of term they I like to use in all the books. So we're just going to write how distensible this, I've got to spell this right, distensible the lung is. Okay, so it's uh, distensible is like its, its ability to be deformed. How easily can it be deformed from its resting state to a change state, which in this case is going to be one of increased thing, increased lung volume. Now, there's a couple of things that are going to that are going to sort of um, oppose that. There's a couple of factors that oppose lung inflation. One of those. So let's put opposition. Opposition uh, to inflation. That should be an L there. Inflation. Okay, so there's going to be a couple of things that oppose lung inflation. One of them is going to be what we call tissue tissue elastic forces, tissue elastic forces, and the other maybe we'll do it in a different color is going to be surface tension. Okay, so these are things which these are things which oppose inflation of the lung. So if these things increase, if you have an increase in tissue elastic forces, it's going to be harder to inflate the lung. And this is exactly what's going on here in, in rigid lungs. And if you have an increase in surface tension, which we'll do a whole video about, but I'll give you a brief kind of idea of what surface tension is here, then that's also going to make the lungs harder to inflate. So surface tension, if, we, if you think of an alveoli as, as a little balloon, that balloon is lined with a layer of fluid. These are fluid lined um, balloons and the result of um, something that is spherical in shape is that the forces want to collapse this. So all the forces, um, force vectors in this alveoli, what they want to do is they want to collapse this bubble down towards its center and this force trying to collapse the alveoli is surface tension. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna oppose um, inflation of the lung, and these tissue elastic forces that we're talking about, these um, are, are due to fibrous tissue. So fibrous tissue, and examples of fibrous tissue can be things like collagen um, and elastin. Okay, so we have some we have some forces that are opposing the inflation of the lung, and compliance is really a balance of, of, of how how much these forces are having an effect. Like how easy are the lungs to inflate? That is essentially compliance, and that's going to depend on these forces, on the amount of collagen and elastin, and the surface tension of the lung. Okay, so we'll introduce a new term here, just called elastance. So elastance. Okay, and elastance simply is this is this property. It's this property of resisting deformation. It's the property of resisting the lungs being deformed from their resting state to their change state of a higher lung volume. And elastance is simply that property. So, um, based on that, compliance is therefore going to be the reciprocal of elastance. Okay, it's kind of like the opposite. So compliance. 
defiance is going to equal the reciprocal of elastance. Okay, so let's let's think about what compliance actually is mathematically. So mathematically speaking, lung compliance, which will uh, let's pick a good color here. I don't know, let's go with yellow. Uh, lung compliance, which will just put C for compliance and then L for the lung, um, is equal to a change in volume, which is going to be in liters, for a given change in pressure. Okay, and that's in centimeters of water. Okay, so th if we think, let's put a square around this. Let's think about this. If you have a a larger change in volume for the same change in pressure, then the lung is easier to inflate, right? That's maybe the case over here. Whereas if we have the same change in pressure and we get a, a smaller change in volume, so a smaller change in volume for a given pressure, then the lungs are harder to inflate, okay? So compliance is a change in volume for a given change in pressure. Um, so let's look at this graph over here and that should hopefully be able to give us a better understanding of this. So what's happening here is we are inflating the lung. So you can see that the arrow is going here. This is a resting lung volume. Um, and you can see how this resting lung volume isn't zero. Um, we talked a little bit about that in the videos on residual volume. Um, there's also what happens here is there's some small airway closure which stops the lung from entirely deflating. So we start from a, a, a resting lung volume, so it's likely be our FRC here, and we inflate the lung, okay? So you'll notice here that as we increase the pressure at these pips going along here, increasing pressure is causing really no change in the, in, in the lung volume. It's gonna be increasing very slightly. So the compliance at this low lung volume is very low, right? So maybe we'll write that here, so we have decrease compliance, uh, let me just undo that. So it's a, a decrease in compliance at low lung volume, okay? And that's gonna be largely due to this surface tension, the fact that all the alveoli are wanting to collapse down on themselves. So our low lung volume here, we have a low compliance. And then as the lung volume, as the pressure starts to increase, we reach this point here where things start to change, right? There's a marked sort of change in the compliance here. This is the point that we call the lower inflection point, lower inflection point or lip. Okay, so th this is really where those, those small airways start to open and um, the lung starts to become a lot more compliant. So you can see here that as uh, we increase our pressure, a, a given increase in pressure here on this part of the curve results in a much larger increase in lung volume, right? So this is where we have our compliance is sort of better, it's increased. So we'll go increased compliance right here. And then we get to very high lung volumes and the lungs become very stiff again because it's, there's, a, there's a fixed amount of volume that you can put into a lung, into a set of lungs really. And as you reach that sort of full maximum inflation, they're gonna become much harder to inflate. It's a little bit like, uh, this is very similar to inflating a balloon and I'll talk about that in a second. So when you get to high lung volumes, the compliance drops again. Okay, so we have a decrease in compliance at high lung volume. So if you think about opening, trying to blow up a balloon, when you first have this fully deflated balloon, it's really difficult to blow to, to blow it up initially. So that's very that represents this low low lung volume, a low balloon volume state right here, where it's quite hard to blow up a balloon initially. But as soon as you get a little bit of volume into it, it suddenly becomes much more compliant, right? It's suddenly much easier to blow up that balloon. And we get a certain point where it's really uh, much easier to get the volume into the balloon and how hard we're breathing into it suddenly results in a much greater change in the volume of the balloon, right? And then eventually we blow up the balloon so much that it, it becomes completely, completely inflated. And then it becomes quite hard again to create a change in volume in the balloon, to inflate that balloon some more. So we have a, a decrease in our compliance here at high lung volume. Okay, so when we talk about mechanically ventilating people, we would like, and uh, we wanna keep them in this range where they have good compliance, right? And you can see up here, there's a sort of another area where this has a marked change in the compliance. We call this the upper 
inflection point. Right, so when we ventilate people and we're talking about the compliance of the lungs, we like to have them in this range where they're very compliant, right? So what, so compliance is the slope of this curve, right? This is a pressure volume curve and compliance is simply the slope of this curve. As the slope increases, the lungs become more compliant. As the slope decreases, the lungs are less compliant, okay? So in a normal, spontaneously breathing adult, a normal compliance, who, and this is an adult not on a mechanical ventilator, just breathing normally, um, is about 200 mils um, for every change centimeter, of water, centimeter water pressure, right? So it's 200 mils per centimeter of water. So that's 200 milliliters for every one centimeter of water change in the pressure. So that's a normal, and this is a uh, spontaneously breathing patient, okay? When you put someone on a, on a ventilator, that gets a little different. And there's a couple of normal values and they vary um, quite a bit, but that 60 to 80, 50 to 100 kind of range um, is where we're, we're looking at. So I'll use 60 to 80 here. 60 to 80 mils per centimeter of water. So you can see that, and this is vent. Okay, so you can see that the, the compliance of the lung is automatically half of what it is when you're breathing spontaneously when you put someone on a ventilator. And this is largely due to the, the, the differences in lung mechanics when you, when you breathe under negative pressure, which you do with um, spontaneously breathing. Whereas when you breathe under positive pressure, that, that changes things from a lung mechanics perspective. So someone's lung compliance is much lower while on a mechanical ventilator. But you can see how there's this shape of the curve where they, they have low compliance at, lung at low lung volumes, then they become more compliant, and then as they get to high lung volume, they become less compliant again. And then this purple track here is, that's exhalation. So you can see that there's a different path on exhalation as there, than there is on inspiration. And that difference is called hysteresis. It's, it, it's I don't know, it's whether or not you want, want to remember that, it's just a kind of terminology thing. Um, but there is a different, it's, they don't go down the same path on exhalation. So what this means is that at a given pressure on exhalation, the lung volume is higher than it is on inspiration. So this is, this is a fairly, um, fairly common um, graph that you'll see when you're studying this kind of stuff. I, you'll notice I didn't put any values in because I, I find that confuses things. Really, this is a principal thing. As to, to low about low lung volumes is they have low compliance, largely due to surface tension. Uh, at high lung volumes, there's low compliance, usually, largely due to over distension of the lungs and the lungs becoming overfilled. Um, so to finish off, I'm gonna quickly show on this graph what it would look like for somebody with say emphysema and somebody with say pulmonary fibrosis, right? So with emphysema, the, the graph here, their sort of curve becomes steeper and it's displaced to the left. So let's try and maybe draw that in. Now you're gonna get real time Ollie drawing, which isn't very good. Um, so emphysema, they may even be starting at a higher lung volume. So maybe they're starting up here somewhere and the curve's gonna be steeper and displaced to the, and displaced to the left here. So this, may, this, this is probably quite exaggerated, but, um, but you'll see how now, um, their compliance has changed. It's become it's become greater, right? They're, they're more compliant here. A change in pressure here is resulting in a much greater change in volume. So this is going to be maybe our emphysema. Emphysema. Okay. Whereas for somebody with um, pulmonary fibrosis or a more restrictive lung disease, that that their compliance is going to be decreased, right? They're going to be less compliant. So their curves are sort of flatter um, and displaced to the right here. And maybe they start at a lower lung volume. So let's see if I can draw something not terrible here. So you can see how on over here with maybe pulmonary fibrosis, the curve is, is flatter because they're less compliant. A change in pressure results in a smaller change in volume for people with a, a, a decrease in their compliance, okay? So this is starting to get a little bit messy, but th that's the basic principle of compliance. It, it is how easy is the lung to open and um, 
and what are the pressure changes that we get when we put volume into a patient. And we can see on this curve that even within one set of lungs, that compliance is, is, is a dynamic process. It changes as lung volume changes. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that's pretty much everything we have to talk about there. We looked at lower inflection points, upper inflection points. So when we're setting our mechanical ventilation parameters, we like to keep people in this middle range between the two inflection points.